Hola, hola, amiga. Feliz año nuevo. I hope you are getting off to a good start in 2024. And I wish nothing but the very best this año nuevo. I know that there have been many things going on in 2023, very turbulent times that we faced, not just personally, perhaps, but even worldwide. And so I hope that this year is a refresh to the things that you want to do, the things that you want to accomplish, and the things that you want to keep going. I wish you nothing but the very best, a lot of prosperity, love, dinero, and as well as patience and amor and care for yourself as a mama. Today, I am so thrilled to invite you to a more intimate space of ours. My hubby, mi esposo of 10 years, Alejandro or Alex, and I will talk openly about our journey as parents, partners, and individuals. I shared on my Instagram stories back then about a month ago with my followers if they had any questions about us and our marriage, our relationship, and especially how we're doing as parents and how parenthood is going with us. And so the reason why I wanted to ask my followers if they had questions is because I never really had an episode with Alex. So this is the first time that I'll have him on the podcast. I'm actually thinking about having him on the podcast every time I end each season of the Viva La Mami podcast because I've been wanting to do an episode like this for such a long time. And so to close out season two of the Viva La Mami podcast, I thought it would be a great way to bring him over and we can kind of touch on different themes and topics about us as a couple, but especially us as parents. For those of you who do not know this, Alex and I have been in a relationship for such a long time. Although we've been married for 10 years, we had our 10th year anniversary in October of 2023. Alex and I have been together for 20 years. <laughs> yes, you heard that right. 20, 20 years. We've been together since we were 14. We were each other's high school sweethearts. We have basically grown up together and we have seen each other rise and thrive, but also we've seen each other at our very, very worst. And I don't know how I would have been without him now that I really think about this. I think that he has been such a wonderful individual to me. He has challenged me to be the best version of myself. But now as parents, he has given me a lot of perspective. And also he has really been an amazing partner. I don't think I would be able to parent the way that I do if it wasn't for him. And so we have a really, really awesome conversation. And I just wanted to wrap up the second season of the Viva La Mami podcast related to just how our partnership is going as parents and especially as parents of two. Y'all, 2023 was extremely hard for me. And it was honestly the most challenging year as parents and as a couple. We transitioned from being a family of three to a family of four. And also we have two little ones. We didn't really wait to have our second because we thought that it would be a better way for Diego to have a sibling closer in age. And so we had Mateo in May and having two under three has been very challenging. We literally sometimes feel like we hardly talk to each other because of how demanding these little ones are. And even though we knew that we signed up for this challenge, it doesn't come real until it literally happens. So yeah, transitioning from like having one child to two this year, it has been very hard. But on top of that, I also quit my nine to five after maternity leave. We also sold our house in the suburbs in the middle of the year. And we lived 
temporarily at my parents' house before moving to Chicago to house hack <laughs> at our investment property. And so we have downsized to a one bedroom apartment. I'm actually going to share an episode about that, about how it's going, how it went really, and why did we make this decision? But, you know, all of this happened all while trying to grow my business as well and to put myself out there through this platform. So 2023 really tested us as a couple and it was so hard. There are still even moments today where we hardly check in on each other because we're just trying to survive. And the spark, you know, even the lust, (laughs) sometimes, you know, it isn't even there because you're just literally trying to survive. And so when we are parents, we really get into these hurdles. And I knew that we were both going to get there. But again, I never knew how hard it was going to be. And part of me misses us, just us two, where we don't have to make decisions for other individuals, but just for us. I could honestly say that I have grieved some aspects of our past as just a couple and that is totally normal so now as a couple we have to really not only prioritize on ourselves as individuals but to also prioritize in our relationship one of the best pieces of advice that my mom has told me is that we should never lose ourselves as mamas and we should prioritize on our relationship And she is so right. And I am so glad that I've seen that through my parents' relationship. I have been very privileged to have witnessed a strong relationship like my parents because they literally have shown each other that affection, that spark, even though sometimes they butt heads a lot because let's be honest, a veces nos traen hasta, you know, who knows how far, but I am just very lucky that they have modeled a very positive relationship and that is what I want. My parents have been together for, my gosh, like 36 years now and they have gone through so many hurdles, so many challenges and they still are to this day. But what I've seen is that at the end of the day, they check in on each other, they respect each other and that is something that Alex and I do and that's something that we we strive to do because if we compete with each other or if we don't check in on each other to see how we're doing or if we don't even challenge each each other to be the best versions of ourselves for the betterment of ourselves to then make this relationship work then things cannot work out and so I'm really excited that we will both be bringing you into this conversation because I think oftentimes as new parents or parents who are going through really different transitions or new transitions, I think that it is important to check in and to see how they're doing. Check in on your partner. Ask them, hey, how are you? Like, really, how are you? Be an open ear and an open book to each other. Support each other. Challenge each other. And I think that if we do this at least once a week, because I know life gets busy. And so on today's episode, Alex and I will dive into the raw realities of parenting, (laughs) the turbulence of having two little ones, and the changes it has brought to our lives. And in this open conversation and really heartfelt discussion, we not only share our experiences, but also answer some of your interesting questions that I received via Instagram stories. So all what I want you really is to sit back, relax, and get ready for an insightful heart-to-heart conversation like no other. So ahora, let's jump into the episode with my husband, Alejandro Cuevas. Welcome to the Viva La Mami podcast. I am your host, Jessica Cuevas. I am a mother of two on a mission to help redefine the meaning of motherhood as a modern Latina mom. Motherhood can be a complex journey, interwoven in two identities that often make us feel ni de aquí ni de allá. 
Viva La Mami is committed to providing you with knowledge, tools, and support to navigate the challenges and triumphs of motherhood as Latina moms. On the show, we'll be discussing culturally relevant topics that will help inform and empower you in whichever season you are in on your motherhood journey. We'll be joined by Latina moms, experts and professionals who can offer advice, practical tips, relatable stories, and honest conversations. So bring your cafecito as I invite you to be a part of this space as we create comunidad about the exciting and challenging parts of being a mommy. Ahora, vámonos. Hola, hola, Alex. How are you? I'm good. Nervioso, but I'm good. (laughs) (laughs) I'm putting you, like, kind of on the spot, and this is way out of your comfort zone. (laughs) Way out of my comfort zone, but hey, ya que, right? Might as well do yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, how does it feel to be on a podcast? I am starstruck. You know, I'm looking at my wife slash celebrity. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're funny. Yeah. Well, I'm very excited to have you here just because this is our first interview that we're doing. And it kind of feels awkward because we're in the same space, but in two different rooms, just because we have to record this podcast episode through like this way. But I want to thank you for just allowing yourself to open up. I did post on Instagram and I asked my followers just like if they had any questions about us and our marriage, our relationship, and especially as parents, because I really wanted to do an episode about how parenthood is going with us, right? How our relationship has evolved as parents, uh, because for those of you out there listening, we have been in a relationship for such a long time. How long, Alex, has it been since we've been together? About 65,000 years. Yeah. (laughs) it's, it's, it's it's, It's been a while. I mean, it definitely doesn't feel as long, but when you sit and think about it, yeah, it's, it's, it's been a few years. More yeah. Than <laughs> yeah, it's definitely been 20 years 20 since years. we've been together. And we're 2003. Uh, well, I don't want to mention how old I am, but not <laughs> 34. Yeah, well, 34. Yeah, we've yes. been together since we were 13. 14, I think. 13, 14. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one of those. Yeah. Years. yeah. So when you really think about it, I mean, we were little. Like, I little. have a nephew. Juju, he's like 12. (laughs) And I'm like, dang, like in two more years, like he could meet a girlfriend and he can be with her for the rest of their lives. And and it makes you think, right? Like we were so little, but then again, we thought we were old enough to be in a relationship. But like, at least for me, I thought it, you know, I just wanted to give it a try. I just never knew what it was like to (laughs) have a boyfriend. (laughs) Agreed. Agreed. I never thought I'd have a girlfriend. Honestly, <laughs> but oh, hey, look at us now, 20 years later, still together. I know. And it's just wild how much it's evolved. And I, for some reason, like, even though we've been together for so long, like we waited, what, 10 years to to get married, mm-hmm. right? We were in a relationship or a girlfriend-boyfriend relationship for 10 years, y después, we were married for eight years before we had children. Mm-hmm. So in total, we had what, casi 18 years um, yeah. of us, you know, being together. And I thought I knew you. I thought that you knew me in totality. And in reality, I think parenting has really tested us. <laughs> um, it has really tested our relationship as individuals, but definitely as partners and now as parents. And and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to have you just to kind of make this a little bit like a therapy session, I would say, pero también to just talk about the reality of parenting and how it's been going. And so mm-hmm. to wrap up my second season of La Viva La Mami podcast, I want, wanted to have you here so we can talk about that. And I also ask folks out there on Instagram if they had questions about us and I will be answering those as well. Mm -hmm. But before we kind of delve into our conversation, can you tell our listeners who you are? (laughs) Of course, the infamous tell yourself, tell tell everybody about yourself. Well, um, 
Well, I guess you've already had me on your, well, not on your podcast, right, but on your platform. Uh, for, those of, for those of you who don't know me, Alejandro Cuevas, um, been with this lovely lady for 20 years, 20 of the most amazing slash challenging years <laughs> of my life. I am sure that she can say the same about me. Um, yeah, I mean, the the highlight of myself as an individual is the, mo- the, the most, I guess you can say, rewarding thing about myself is just being a father of two um you know i pride myself in being the best father i can be for my two little boys <laughs> i don't know what else to say about myself other than that i mean yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh i think that's the sweetest thing you've ever said <laughs> i might cry i don't know i've been very emotional <laughs> hey you know we've been to these are very turbulent times, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. I think this year, for some reason, it's really tested us. To say the least, to say the least, honestly. Yeah. Yes, yes. And so I think, I guess taking a couple steps back, my question to you, and I think I've never, I guess we've talked about it, right? We we usually do some check-ins here and there. They're pretty sporadic, but it just depends right now, at least yeah. whenever we have the privacy, whenever we have the time. Like right now, we're both looking at the monitor and we're just yeah. like hoping that no one wakes up right now in the middle of the night. But I guess, you know, I've, I've asked you this question, but how did it feel when you first found out that you were going to be a dad and that our relationship, like how did you expect our relationship to be as parents? Well, when we first found out we were going to have our first born, I really didn't know how to react because again, it was almost as if it wasn't real, you know? And throughout like your pregnancy or our pregnancy, like it, it still didn't feel real. Like I, I mean, I knew the thought was already. Uh, it was obviously brewing in my head. Que obviamente, we're gonna have to, you know, grow up fast and not think about just us two, because obviously we're gonna bring somebody else, a, a little, a little human into this world. But like what I've said before, like that one time when you were walking, you know, our late dog Roxy down, uh, what is it, that, on Gannett Lane and I was coming home from work and then in the car, I just saw you straight forward. And then as soon as I got next to you and you turned around and I saw the baby bump right there, it was it was like this. I was like, oh my God, I'm going to be a dad. <laughs> you know, I just had like a little awakening in the car. I'm just like, this is for real. You know, obviously there's no turning back. Time to you know, just be the most responsible person that I can be and do my do my part in our relationship and what we obviously created in Mm -hmm. our little boy. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And how like how did you expect for our relationship to be? Like were you nervous, Um, scared? Were you excited that our relationship was gonna get into this level as parents? It was a mix of everything i was scared i was excited just the excitement slash fear of the unknown because you know you when we were just dating or just like recently married we always talked about hey no queremos niños right (laughs) so all of a sudden just one day hey let's have a kid (laughs) you know so it was uh it's just a mix of emotions you know, mainly excited, mainly definitely excited. The the challenge that I personally knew that we were going to face together as a couple, because I knew that obviously like when something like this happens, when a couple decides to bring a human into this world, obviously it's a team. So I knew that we were just going to have to depend on each other. I was going to have to be there for you at your worst and vice versa. And just overall, for lack of a better word, just team it up just team it up because obviously that's what couples do (laughs) you know at least yeah you depend on me I depend on you that 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 type of thing for me it was it was exciting because I I loved like growing up with you really we grew up together 
And I loved that we were going to get into this new chapter of our lives and that we were going to do it together, you know, as parents and in creating a human being at this time, it was, you know, Diego, our first. And so that was very exciting. It was, it, I, I would say that the, the one thing that I enjoyed about my pregnancy was that for some reason I felt more secure about myself. I felt like, okay, we got this, you know, I felt positive about this. And then when I was pregnant of Mateo, our second, I, <laughs> it was a blur. <laughs> it was a blur. <laughs> it was a blur. <laughs> but also it was like, okay, we got this. Like we, yeah, we already course. went through parenting. Yeah. Right? It, it, I would say that it wasn't like we were naive. We knew what to expect, but I think that once he was born and once we literally brought him home, it's like, oh man, we have two. Yep. And instead of us, you know, tag teaming for one, it's like now it's one to one, right? Yep. Yep. And I'm like, I don't know how other parents do it when they have more than two kids. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I feel like we don't even have time. <laughs> to- right now we're just winging it. You know, just yeah. parenting on survival mode, honestly. Because yes. yeah. we thought one was challenging. We didn't know what we were getting ourselves onto once we had two. Yes. <laughs> you know, obviously, yes. and our oldest one, obviously, I mean, everybody who's been involved in our life can tell that, I mean, no, to no fault of his own, obviously, right? Mm. That he was going to be the most challenging one. Yeah, he still is. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. And so considering, you know, that we signed up for this, right? We both signed up to be parents of one and then two. Yes, todo. Yeah. <laughs> Just no two. more. No more. No more. No more. No <laughs> more. But now that we are in this phase, do you have some level of grief or did you go through a grieving process when you became a dad, um, either to, you know, the first one or the second like, do you miss, I guess, being a parentless man? <laughs> um, I mean, I guess I can answer that by saying that first, anybody that says otherwise can, can know that they don't miss, you know, the single stages or at least just the couple without the kids is lying. You know, obviously, like when we're trying to go somewhere, like, Tenemos un mandado and, you know, struggling to get one, not one, but two kids ready, making sure that we have everything that we need. You sometimes reflect, it's like, damn. You know, I kind of miss those times where you can just grab your keys, your wallet, <laughs> your purse, and just go. Yeah. You know, but it, uh, tough times like that just, it, it, it helps you grow as a parent, mm-hmm. as an individual, right? Because again, it's like what I said earlier, you're not just you or just a couple, you know, obviously you have other responsibilities as a human being, as a parent, it's not just us. So yeah, I mean, yeah, I just to answer your question. Yeah, I, I sometimes do miss it just being us too. But at the end of the day, I wouldn't trade it for anything else. You know, I love those two little boys. I love those two little monsters, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't trade it for anything, especially when they go to sleep. You know, at the end of the day, yeah, they, excuse my language, they kicked their ass. You know, they really did. But mm-hmm. once we get them to sleep, once we watch them sleep, it's like, yeah, I would do it all over again. Yeah. Yeah, they're worth it. They're definitely yeah. worth it. Yeah, and I think we definitely need to accept that, we are in this whole new season of life in this whole new chapter of life Mm -hmm. and it's okay to grief it's okay to look back and and you know reflect and and say like oh my gosh it was so easy to get out the door you know pero como dicen ya pa que (laughs) and also we have to accept the fact that okay well we both sign up for this and this is a new life that we have and a much abundant life because we have two more people, two more souls, you know, who are with us and that we're helping them grow and and hopefully they can give back in some way once they're older. Mm -hmm. And that's when we know that we did our job. Exactly. And so you did share about certain things you wish that 
it would be easier, right? You know, to to not have children, especially when getting out the door and everything. Yeah. Pero can you tell our listeners, like, do you think you experienced some level of, I wouldn't say depression because you were never diagnosed, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm being careful with that word. Pero do you feel like your identity as a dad um, or as a person, do you feel like your identity as a person changed and how did you navigate that, especially with me as your wife? Well, that's an ever evolving lesson for me. Mm. Um, you know, obviously I'm still trying to learn how to be a dad. Really, I, I don't think anybody really ever stops learning or stops trying to learn how to be a dad. You're never going to, or a parent for that matter. It, I think anybody who thinks that they have this whole parenting gig down is kind of lying because it's an ever evolving task. You know, it's a responsibility, mm -hmm. but I don't know. That's, that's a good question. I never really thought about that. Like as far as like me being, or like, I guess to kind of rephrase it, like being sad, but I've never faced any sadness or any like postpartum or anything like that. Yeah. Like I said before, I sometimes do miss how easy our life was before kids, but I just feel like it, it, we made leaps and giant leaps from our first to our second kid as in terms of like our growth as individuals and the challenges that these kids give us. It's, it's helpful. Yes. It's stressful as heck, but you know, it, it just, it's just kind of like a never ending battle. Right. I mean, one day they don't kick your ass. The next day is like, like Diguito says, Te quiero mucho, right? It's just like, <laughs> oh man. All right. It was worth all the pain and suffering that we've done, that we've gone through and that we will continue to go through. Mm -hmm. I think that's just going to be a question that's never ending. <laughs> and mm -hmm. that's, that's going to be never ending because mm -hmm. I, to be completely honest, I don't have a, I don't have an answer to that. I, yeah. you know, I can't answer that to, to, to myself, to you or to your listeners because I'm still learning. Yeah. I'm still learning. Yeah. And that's something that I love about you because you, you are just like this open person in terms of that, you know, you are, you may be afraid of certain changes, like certain things that can cause change, but mm -hmm. other things like this, for example, like for me, I want to know the answers. Like mm -hmm. I want to know what's the best way to be the best mom that yeah. I can. And sometimes I, focus on like putting myself in this rabbit hole right of like trying to find the answers mm -hmm. instead of being present or instead of being you know just like going with the flow and and that's how you've always been and that's the one thing that i love about you and so there's so many people that ask us oh my gosh like how do you do it like why how, what do you do being this long in in, in a relationship for this long and I think that's one of the reasons why, because you, you like give me that sense of reassurance that any decision that we make or any changes that happen, it's okay. And you got to go with the flow. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. It's just like what I say too. I mean, it just like how you love that about me. What I love about you is that you always have to have some plan, <laughs> you know, it's like we, we, we balance each other out that yin and yang. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm go with the flow. You're the planner. I mean, and one thing, like I've always said, why I don't like planning and what you kind of don't like is that once you plan something, if it doesn't go the way you planned, well, mm -hmm. value, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, now, right now, we're going through some hurdles as as a couple. And, and we've even considered, you know, going to couples therapy. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, insurance and everything, we just couldn't... We haven't been able to find the right person. Yeah. But right now we have gone through a lot. I would say in the past, what, six months, maybe? Six months, a year. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think once we um, decided to, you know, sell our house in the suburbs, I think that right now we are still waiting for you know, the, our apartment to be fully remodeled 
and everything because we're waiting on living there. So that way we could be mortgage free in our investment property. And yeah, like there has been so many changes and considering this big move that we did and navigating the emotional roller coaster of a toddler that Diego went through and is still going through. <laughs> and then we welcomed a little one to this summer. You know, there have been moments where we don't even check in. Mm -hmm. We we don't even talk about how we're feeling, even though I do sense your frustration. Oh, yeah. I do have you know, being that I'm connected to you, I do feel that level of stress and anxiety too. And, um, and I'm sure that you, you feel that <laughs> from me, you get that sense. And oh, so yeah. I, I think one thing that I want to work on is to check in with you. And I know I, I try at least, but maybe checking in on each other frequently, yeah. at least to say how we're doing, or maybe doing some kind of meditation or something like that. And so being that we're going into a new year and I know that I'm not all into like resolutions or whatever, but considering this madness of a year that 2023 brought to us, what are some things that you want to do for yourself, but also for us as, as a couple, as parents, considering, you know, the two little ones in our, in our lives? Yeah. So let me start off by saying that for what I would love for us to do as a couple is to continue this wonderful thing called date nights, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, because anybody who's married and has kids can definitely attest to how sweet and how nice it is to just have that alone time with your significant other. I think that's something that you and I can definitely agree on that's been missing because obviously our situation right now doesn't really allow us to be alone or even with each other it's always kids 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 work kids <laughs> you know <laughs> and yeah that's definitely my top priority for us as a couple and like how i mentioned on our date night the other night was that for our kids for diguito especially um i think anybody who has seen it especially like in your family that kid can talk <laughs> That kid can talk, and he, for his age, he's just going to be, he's about to be three, and he talks to you like if he was like six or seven years old, right? Mm -hmm. So sometimes I lose I lose track of him as a kid, that he's a toddler, because, again, he talks a lot. <laughs> he can definitely hold a conversation with you, and mm -hmm. I've just been so busy trying to, how should I say, be not a disciplinarian, right? But I am kind of missing the fact that he is a toddler and I don't treat him like a toddler. Mm. So my goal for this year is just to see him for who he is as a kid, accept him for who he is because, yeah, he, he is tough. And I just want to try to cherish the moments that we have because, obviously, as we all know, time goes by super quick. Mm. So I want to... I want to treat him like a toddler, but it, it, I hope that doesn't sound bad, right? But I just want to treat him like a toddler, as in, like, I want to play with him a lot more because I think that playtime is something that I haven't done. I'm guilty of that, <laughs> you know? That me Mateo, like, I, I, it's so different, the time. Diego, the COVID baby, Mateo, the, I don't know, normal time baby, right? Mm -hmm. I definitely have not given Mateo that, attention like how we did with Dieguito. Mm. So I want to, like I mentioned, we read to Dieguito. I haven't, I'm guilty of not grabbing a book and reading to him. So I would love to start that, <laughs> you know, just have that one-on-one -on -one time or at least both of them just grab a book and read to them and just cherish the time that, I, that, that these turbulent slash wonderful times with these kids mm -hmm. at, at this age. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just, yes. just, just try. I'm guilty of not being present. Yeah. So I just want to try mm -hmm. to cherish the times right now as they are. Yeah, well, that's good that you have thought about what you want to do for the upcoming year. And that way, well, it's already here. It's going to be published. <laughs> so putting yourself accountable for that. 
And also I'll make sure to remind you mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. And that way we can both partner up or just reminding you, hey, don't forget to read mm-hmm. or don't forget to play with him. Don't forget to plan a date night. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and that cool. way, yeah, we can both like be present in our relationship, but also for yourself and as a dad también. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I'm going to answer a couple questions that our, my followers have asked in stories. And so a question from Amanda from A Mama Drama asks, was the jump from one to two as hard as they say? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely was. It was pretty, it was pretty difficult. And not mm-hmm. so much, like I've mentioned, not so much the the younger one. It was more so the older one because mm-hmm. as they get a little bit older, they're obviously a, lot, a little bit more aware of their surroundings. So it, it is a little bit harder to try to make the older one not feel left out. Mm-hmm. So I think for me personally, on uh, like on my side of the spectrum, the parent, that that was the most difficult one. Just trying to give equal love, equal, yeah. equal attention to both. Yeah, yeah, especially right now with me just exclusively breastfeeding Mateo, and like I'm always holding him, or he's always wanting to be, you know, breastfed, and I feel so bad with Diego. But then again, I tried my best to spend some quality time with Diego too. And and like the other day you went to get a haircut with him and you did spend that time. So just finding those little little mini time slots of like, you know, just spending time with our kids one-on-one maybe and, and having that quality time for sure. Yeah, yeah of course. That's important. All right. Andrea, who is my coach, shout out to her. From Mama Turn Mompreneur asked, how do you both ensure you have time for self-care as parents of two littles? That's a good question. Well, I didn't even know what self-care was. And to be completely honest, I really don't know what I would do. I haven't found what that self-care is for myself. But Mm -hmm. the only thing that gives me is somewhat of some level of comfort believe it or not just it's watching the bears <laughs> oh gosh <laughs> yeah it's like it's something that i look forward to right where it's something yes they suck yes <laughs> they, it, i mean for me that whatever <laughs> call it okay. call it how you ever want like call it like how you want it right? but for me like i feel at peace sometimes but yes, when they lose, I get angry, but it comes with the turf, if you will, right? You, I love the team. I love it when they win. I still love it when they lose. It's just <laughs> like it's just like me, like you and I, you know, you love me at my best. And even though when I mess up, you still love me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, you're so obsessed. But no, I get it. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for me... Yeah, I mean, I like to go out with my friends just to get distracted and, and have adult conversations to talk about you. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, that's cool. And <laughs> um, getting my nails as well. Yeah, just trying to find at least some alone time. But for me, like self-care, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, well, it should be a bubble bath or something elaborate. But for you, like it's as easy as watching football, yeah. you know, Sunday, Thursday. Sunday. Monday, Sunday? Monday, Monday, Thursday, and Sunday. <laughs> okay, yeah. <clears throat> See, at least I know that. I should be involved though with football because you know I don't want our boys to like know that their mom isn't into sports or whatever. Even though I'm not. All right, let's see another question. Maribel from Hijas Bellas asked, "How are home tasks split between the two?" <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, I don't know. <laughs> That's a question that I kind of, I mean, we you definitely do give me the tasks, right? I mean, at least something that can take the load off of your shoulders. <laughs> but being completely honest, I mean, yeah, just going to test that I sometimes forget to do my part sometimes. <laughs> I try I try my best, you know, but I'll confess that sometimes I, I, that I should be doing a better job. But you're good. You like to cook. I love to cook. Yeah. But um and, yeah. Yeah, other other stuff, I mean, 
I can admit that I can do a better job at. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe we should both assign each other tasks and that way we know what each person is responsible for what. All right. Well, last question. And this is from Lily. What is the best advice you can give to parents before they have a second child? Mm, that's a good one. I would probably say to just check in on each other. I was, I mean, because like how we've been talking through this, like this whole like duration of our little interview that adding a second child is extremely hard. It mm -hmm. is extremely hard. And I think, I think we did pretty well checking out on each other when Mateo, when you were pregnant with Mateo. But I think it's just trying to prepare yourself for the extra load of responsibilities and the extra load, the extra financial load the extra, just the extra everything. When, mm. when people were, when people are thinking about having one kid and you just try to multiply that by like 20 <laughs> when you're going to have <laughs> another kid, because it's, I mean, you can't sugarcoat this stuff, right? I mean, no. kids are tough. It's tough on your bodies. It's tough on your mind. It's just tough on everything. I, it just, don't, my best advice would probably be just try to prepare yourself for what's to come. Enjoy the ride as well, because as hard as it is, being a parent is definitely rewarding. I have a lot to say, but I'm thinking of doing an episode on what it's like to transition from one to two. Mm -hmm. That way, you know, I can delve a little bit deeper, but everything that you said is like 100%. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and not to scare anyone either, but I think it's, Speaking it's, the truth. It's good to be scared. Yeah, Honestly, yeah. Kid, this, this, this part of parenthood, this part of life, again, mm -hmm. you can't sugarcoat this stuff. It's, it's difficult. Right. Exactly. Well, thank you to uh, the followers and listeners who reached out and asked some questions about us. Cause I think it is very important, you know, to just, check in and talk about the current state of our relationship, I think. And, and that way, you know, people can get to know a little bit more about us and a little bit more about how parenting is going. I think I would love to have you again for another episode. I'd love to be um, maybe we can do this like at every end of the season sort of thing. Sure. And we can touch on a couple topics porque yeah, I think the reason why I'm a mom is because, you made me a mom, I guess. <laughs> I don't know if there's a, another way of saying that, but you know, You're my welcome. life. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> but yeah, I think my life completely changed as yeah. we know it. Like both of our lives changed. And it's wild that even though we've known each other for so long, we've grown up and, and seen each other's strengths and weaknesses, triumphs and failures at the very high and the very low moments, like I would say that doing this with you is, has been such a blessing. It has been such a wonderful experience. And me seeing you as a dad, it's like, I imagined seeing you as a dad, but I don't know. I just like get butterflies. It's almost like, you know, having that feeling when I first met you sort of thing. <laughs> You know, because it just warms my heart. And you are a wonderful dad and a wonderful father. And I just wanted to tell you that out well, there. That way it's out there. <laughs> appreciate it. I mean, I wouldn't be able to be who I am without you. I wouldn't be who I am without you. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, if for those of you uh, listening to this episode, if you have any other questions that you want to ask us or Alex, feel free to reach out via DMs. That way I can answer them or we can do another kind of episode about our relationship. But yeah, thank you, Alex. Again, I know this is out of your comfort zone. You're a very introverted person. Yep. <laughs> Thanks for being here. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. Hope uh, I brought something useful to your platform so <laughs> you did you did awesome. all right all right well i'll see you in a couple hours <laughs> bye. bye thank you for tuning in to the viva la mami podcast if you like this episode make sure to leave a review and write what episode really resonated with you 
If you really loved it, share it on social media or with an amiga. As always, please subscribe to this podcast wherever you are listening. Make sure to follow me at Viva La Mami on Instagram or visit vivalamami.com. Please note the information shared in this podcast is for educational purposes only and should not be replaced by your healthcare provider nor taken as professional advice. 